Welcome to this tutorial where we are going to talk about muscle actions and functional groups of muscles. We've already discussed all the types of movements allowed by our joints such as our extension, flexion, abduction, adduction and all the rest but now we need to focus on how the muscles make these actions occur. So what I've got up on the screen here is a left lateral view of a, a person from the shoulder down are uh, just focusing on their left arm. What we're going to look at now is a few different muscles and naming our functional groups. So there we go, we've got a couple of the muscles highlighted and a left lateral view. And now we can focus on what these functional groups are. And the first thing we need to know is that there is four of them. And this naming of the functional groups is in relation to the type of movement we're trying to achieve. The first type being a prime mover. And for this tutorial, the movement we are going to uh, talk about will be elbow flexion. So the movement you'd be doing if you were doing a bicep curl. A prime movers are the muscle in a movement that is responsible for the majority of the action taking place. Therefore, it will have the highest workload of all the muscles involved in that action. So the largest workload. And if we have a look at the muscles I've got highlighted here, uh, which one do you think it's going to be? Would it be uh, the bicep or the tricep or the brachioradialis that I've got highlighted down the bottom? No, it's definitely going to be our bicep. Our bicep is going to be extending the length of the humerus and then inserting down onto our radius. Now if we're lifting the elbow uh, upwards and decreasing that angle, which is what we do in flexion, we're going to need that insertion on the radius for the bicep to pull against. And I'll just point out as well that your prime movers will often be called agonists. So they're the muscle that has the largest workload, so they're the muscle that's going to be in agony when you work it. And the second type of uh, functional group we have is called an antagonist. The antagonist is going to be creating resistance against that prime mover and preventing overshoot. So it opposes the desired movement and often becomes stretched out, which will help the muscles uh, spring back to their resting position after that contraction. Now if we were contracting our bicep, do you think the brachioradialis is going to be stretched out and provide resistance? No, it's going to be our triceps. And with that point, an antagonist will almost always be on the opposite side of the joint of the prime mover. So I've just outlined our triceps in blue and it's antagonizing our elbow flexion. So antagonizing our biceps. So it opposes the bicep and will be on the opposite side. Now we have our prime movers and antagonists and the third functional group we have is called a synergist. A synergist is a muscle that's going to be helping our prime mover. So we don't want to put all of the load of a specific movement on the one muscle. That's why we have these synergists, and I'm just outlining the brachioradialis here, which is going to be our synergist for our bicep and elbow flexion. So if something is creating synergy, it means it's uh, working in harmony with each other, and they're helping each other achieve the same job. So it's going to add force to that movement, and it's also going to help stabilize uh, the bone and the joint that that prime mover is working against. Now using this brachioradialis as an example, it's going to be a synergist in the fact that it is going to have its origin on the humerus and its insertion is on the radius. Now the insertion of our biceps is going to be on the radius as well meaning that these two muscles that are on the same side uh, of the joint or same side of the movement that we're trying to achieve, which is elbow flexion, they can help each other and they can move together. But the brachioradialis is also going to overlap 
the bicep once it passes on to the radius, meaning that it can stabilize and prevent the bicep rotating the radius accidentally. So it's a synergist in the fact that it's adding force and stabilizing at the same time. And that leads us to our fourth and last functional group, which are the fixators. Fixators are a more specific type of stabilizer muscle that's going to give the prime mover an immobilized bone to act upon. Now, if we didn't have our brachioradialis muscle on our arm, Elbow flexion would lead to the bicep rotating our radius as it lifted upward, meaning we would have a mobile bone. But because of the brachioradialis, we can prevent this rotation happening and immobilize the radius for the bicep to pull against. And we can refer to this as a fixator as well as a synergist in this case. So we've covered our four individual functional groups now and the movements that they allow and we can apply these functional groups to any movement that we have in our body if we think of a, a flexion of our leg, so flexion of our knee joint, what would the prime mover be? Well the prime mover would be our hamstrings, wouldn't it? Because our hamstrings are going to be responsible for closing that angle and creating flexion which would mean our antagonist would be our quadricep muscles. So if you have a think about any part of your body and any movement you can achieve, you can apply these uh, four functional groups to find out uh, what their job is and what their role is in that movement. Now, I hope this video has been helpful to you. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.